So this is a talk on the sort of biocode fins and limbs system that we've been developing in conjunction with the Moraya Biocode project. And the idea of this was basically to build a pipeline that co connects the field metadata all the way through with the lab metadata and the sequence analysis metadata to um, keep everything linked through the entire pipeline. And one of the things that we want to emphasize is making it easy for people to adopt systems like this and to adopt standards. And we found that the best way to do that is to make it easy to use and to limit the extra effort that people have to go through to record all of the extra metadata. And so why use a FIMS and a LIMS? It's um, basically, like I said, keeps the chain of data all the way through from the specimen through to submitting to GenBank or some database like that. It also helps you find errors in your lab processes because um, you can easily search to find patterns with problems. And it speeds up the process by automating as much of the um, informatics as possible. So there's three components to the system. There's a FIMS component, which basically handles the field metadata. There's a LIMS component, which handles lab processing. And there's an analysis component, which handles the sequence assembly and trimming and subsequent analysis. And so the FIMS tracks the field metadata, that's the sort of time and place and any information about the specimen, the organism. The LIMS tracks things like reaction cocktails, primers, and the analysis tracks uh, what parameters you use for the assembly algorithm, a record of any manual edits you made, stuff like that. So the biocode FIMS was written by John Beck, who's over there, and Joyce Gross at UC Berkeley. And it basically um, tracks workflows across different teams, so it allows for some differences in the collecting processes between different teams collecting different taxa. And it works with Excel spreadsheets, and the reason for that was because that's something that researchers are used to, and it lowers the learning curve in moving to the system. It's also tolerant of bad or non-existent internet, because if you're out in the field, you're not necessarily going to have a connection to a big server back at your institution. And so the way that that works is you have a template Excel spreadsheet and you fill in your specimen records as you collect them. And then you run it through a program called BioValidator, which basically takes um, a file describing um, the way the data is supposed to be formed and then it validates it. So you can say, for example, that the lat long field has to comply to, um, comply to geospatial coordinates or that the taxa field has to be one of the specific list of organisms. Uh, you can also do photo matching. And so if you take photos of the specimen, you can match them to your specimen ID names, and then you can automatically upload them to photo databases. For example, you can upload them to Flickr from here and then read them down later in the pipeline. Um, we also support other firms' databases because we want to be as flexible as possible. So we've got... Um, Excel spreadsheets, um, so you can just basically create a database in a spreadsheet and you can search that from within the plugin. Also Google spreadsheets, which are really awesome for connecting multiple people together. So you can upload a spreadsheet into Google Docs and then you can connect to that with the plugin. You can treat it like a database. Uh, you can also use a MySQL database directly if you've got your own field tracking system or you can use Tapir Services, which is a protocol for connecting collections databases based on the Darwin core. Then the uh, second module is the BioCode LIMS, which is what handles your lab data. And so that provides full linkage to all the FIMS databases I talked about before. And it provides a whole bunch of automation tools. And I'll show you here, you can see it's linked here to a field database, and so you can immediately get all your field database in the lab. And that can be really powerful because you can start to ask questions like, say, this group of um, uh, specimens, they've all failed. And you can query, like, perhaps they were all collected around a certain time, and maybe something happened with the preservation, or maybe they were from a particular locality, or maybe it's a taxa that doesn't work with your primers. And you can see, for example, here, this is a plate document in the limbs, um, which is a plate of specimens that have been run through a PCR. 
And you don't have to have a big 96 well plate like this. You could have an individual reaction or an eight well strip. Um, but the important thing is that you can display as much metadata as you want directly on the readout. So here, for example, it's just the extraction ID and some primers, but you could also put taxonomy or collector information in there. And once you've entered these for extractions and PCRs and sequencing reactions, you get a workflow which looks like this. And this basically tracks the journey of one sample through your lab. So this is a really simple workflow where you've just done a PCR and then a sequencing reaction in each direction. But you can, um, you can see that, for example, if you did a PCR that failed the first time and then you tried it with a new pair of primers and it worked, then you could see in this workflow that there was a failure with this primer and a pass later on. And once you've got a bunch of these, you can look at them all at the same time and you can see patterns of pass and failures between primers and taxa. And it really helps with analysis. And the final stage of the pipeline is sequence analysis where you've done all the lab work and you're bringing all your sequences um, to get ready for submission to a barcode. And so what happens is you basically pull your sequences out of the limbs and into Genius, which is our sequence analysis package. And they have all of the lab metadata and all of the field metadata already attached, which really helps you when you're doing your analysis. And we also have this um, concept called binning, uh, which basically allows you to split your sequences into three groups based on um, the quality. So you can see some, um, some parameters up here related to sequence quality, like the minimum length of your sequences required and the minimum average quality. And what you need to do is sort of tweak these settings based on some data that you get through at the beginning of your runs. And uh, the idea is to get them into three groups where there's low quality sequences which need to be resequenced and aren't worth looking at, and high quality sequences which are perfect and you don't need to look at, and then the medium ones that are in the middle which will actually require user input. And we found that it's about maybe 10% of the sequences that fall in that middle group that actually require your attention. So it's saving a lot of time by splitting them out into those three groups. Um, we also have automated algorithms like for sequence assembly and for trimming. And um, we don't get rid of the trimmed data from the ends of the sequences. We just mark them as trimmed, which means that if you come later and want to refine your parameters, you can actually recover that data. And uh, when you finish trimming, you can assemble your sequence um, using the algorithm parameters there. And um, you get a report that um, is stored back in the limbs. And when you've got your final barcode sequences, the final step is to do a verify taxonomy, which um, basically blasts those barcode sequences and makes sure that taxonomy that you get back from NCBI matches the records back in your specimen database. And you can also plug your results into the analysis features in Genius. So for example, this is an alignment of all the barcode sequences, which can, um, which can allow you to see if there's any unexpected differences. Uh, this is a neighbor joining tree, which allows you to check that um, your species are clustered together. And this sh shows us linking the um, specimen metadata from the field all the way through to the analysis data from the sequence analysis. And the very final step is a gem bank submission. And this is really nice because all you have to do is basically tell the plugin which fields in your data correspond to which gem bank fields. And after that, it's a one click operation. So you don't have to manually combine anything, you don't have to use sequin. All you have to do is fill in this dialog and hit OK, and it will produce a gem bank sequence for you. So the main themes of all of this are that we, um, we want to link the field data through to the analysis data seamlessly. And we want to make it as easy as possible and to automate as much as possible so that people are motivated to use the system and don't feel that it's too difficult to fill in all of the metadata. Thank you. Are there any questions?